Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna go ahead and start the video off with if I'm speaking a little bit quieter than normal or if I seem low energy, it is because I've been battling constant migraines over the last four or five days. So I am very drained and I am in quite a bit of pain today, but I did want to sit down and talk to you guys about all my favorite romances of 2019, as you guys can tell from the title. If you've been following my channel for a while, when I first started my channel, I was I was reading mostly like horror and Stephen King, and then I got into YA, and then YA fantasy, and then some adult fantasy. Well, 2019 was a big year for romance for me. I read quite a few. I basically absorbed all of the ones that I possibly could, so today I wanted to talk to you about the standout ones that I have. And today's question of the day is, when it comes comes to characters in a book, whether it be a platonic relationship or a romantic relationship, what is something that really draws you to them? My favorite is humor. I think that humor for me even in like fantasy novels or in romance novels, whatever kind of book it is, I love the funny character. I think that they add a depth to the story for me and I think because I surround myself with such funny people in real life, it is nice to have that kind of character in a book as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started and talk to you guys all about my favorite romances of 2019. So the first book I want to talk about is a book that I feel like can be on everyone's list this year or has pretty much been on everyone's list this year and that would be The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. Christina Lauren is an author that I fell in love with at the beginning of 2019 and this book was no exception. It follows our main character Olive. Her sister is getting married and they are at the wedding when everyone comes down with food food poisoning at the reception and Ethan is the best man of her new brother-in-law and not Olive's favorite person. Well funny enough because everyone does come down with food poisoning, Olive and Ethan are actually sent to Maui to basically have the honeymoon that her sister wasn't able to have. This is my favorite kind of like romance contemporary novel. It is an enemies to lovers kind of circumstance. So you know there is obviously like that kind of tension that is being built up, a lot of walls being broken down at the same time. There's a lot of pre preconceived notions about Ethan and who Ethan is or even like Ethan and how he feels about Olive and there is a ton of that in this book and that is my absolute favorite. I love when little bits of characters are kind of revealed throughout the story with normal day-to-day -day interactions and the fact that Olive and Ethan are kind of stuck on this island together and are using basically a honeymoon like a very romantic kind of setting. I really, really liked it. I gave this five stars. I thought it was hilarious. Christina Lauren, for me, is a standout author when it comes to writing funny characters and writing really great dialogue. And it seems very fluid and how it would be like in just like a normal day-to-day -day situation. So I definitely appreciate that from this novel. Hands down, one of my favorites by them. And if you haven't read it, I would recommend it if you're looking for something kind of carefree and fun. I think a lot of Christina Lauren's stuff does have like a little bit of heaviness to it with some of the content. But I think this one overall was really just a really fun like summary rom-com. The next book I want to talk about is probably my second favorite book that I read over the entire year. This book took me completely by storm. I actually sent it to a bunch of people. I just wanted everyone to read it and that'd be Well Met by Jen DeLuca. I actually got this in my book of the month and it was, I don't know, it was just fun I think at the time because it is more of I would say a summer read but it follows our main character Emily and she moves back to her hometown to take care of her sister because her sister is in an accident and she does have a young niece as well. So she comes back to basically live with them to sort of help her sister out. And at the same time, her niece decides that she wants to do the Renaissance Fair. So Emily agrees to do it with her, or at least go to sign up with her, and then basically gets roped into being a bar wench at the Renaissance. There's a man named Simon who sort of runs things, and she runs into him the very first day of like orientation for the Renaissance Fair, and he's basically just an asshole, and she doesn't like him. There becomes sort of like a spat between the two of them, and Emily really doesn't enjoy like being around him. Well, come the first day of Renaissance, fair Simon is there and he is dressed as a pirate and he is freely flirting with her. So a lot of the story is Emily trying to figure out who Simon really is, if he is just this giant asshole or if he is the kind and funny and witty person that he is when he is at the actual fair. That was, I think for me, what drew me into the story. What really kept me going though is I like Emily. Emily is one of those characters who is coming off of a semi-abusive relationship where she's made to feel like she's unimportant or her dreams and goals are unimportant. She's basically cast aside by her ex and she decides to do what she wants to do and just enjoy life. And Simon doesn't really 
he doesn't seem to really enjoy that aspect of her. So a lot of the novel focuses on that and a lot of the rest of the novel actually focuses on the passing of Simon's older brother and carrying on the legacy of Renaissance Fair and Emily attempting to help him or to want to bring new and exciting things maybe to Renaissance because there are other Renaissance Fairs that are opening up at the same time and there's a little bit of competition. It is a very small town kind of romance novel. The town they live in is very small but I thought it had a big heart to it at the same time. A lot of the characters like the supporting characters, you really feel like you know them because there are so few of them because once again the town is small that it added a lot of depth to the story and it made it feel very familiar and comforting at the same time. If you're a fan of Renaissance or like romance at all this would definitely be the book for you. Um, I actually gave it to my friend Raina and she loved it because she's a big fan of Renaissance and obviously it is a little bit of a romance and I don't know it's just one of those like feel good kind of books. I think I gave yeah I gave this one five stars as well. Now the next book I have here was an interesting read for me, but definitely one of my favorites. It's another one that I got in Book of the Month. I'd been seeing it everywhere, and that would be The Kiss Quotient. Kiss Quotient actually follows your main character, Stella. Stella is incredibly smart, but she also does have Asperger's. So I really liked the representation here for that. I think that it added a lot to the story, but it was done in my favorite kind of way where it was just a part of who Stella was. Like there wasn't, I don't know, like it didn't feel cringy at all. And the reason why I think I like this so much is this story also also lends a lot of dialogue and discussion to what it is to be a sex worker because this in this book Stella ends up hiring a man named Michael who is a sex worker and she wants him to basically teach her how to be dateable like how to date because she is being pressured by her parents to get married and she doesn't really know how to do that like physical interactions with people are very hard for her she does get obviously overstimulated and being in those kinds of situations she kind of shuts down so she hires Michael for that purpose and then obviously a little bit of a romance starts happening between the two of them. I really like this especially because Michael also has a family member that has Asperger's so it's nice that there is a lot of discussion on who like what he expects Stella to be and how he can love and support her and then by the same token how Stella can kind of break down some of her walls. I don't mean with like Asperger's but just in general and like being more open and vulnerable about who she is. Now at the heart of it this is a romance novel. There is obviously like sex and things like that in this but I think for me it was just the overall story coupled with the romance that I truly loved. I love Stella and I love Michael and I think that they are a really cute relationship and one that I feel like is very realistic to any of my friends that also have Asperger's. I have two younger brothers that do and to see this kind of book and have hope that they can meet somebody like that and somebody who will love them and treat them the, like a human like they should be treated it was really nice to read a book like that and I did read The Bride Test which does have another um, main character with Asperger's but I didn't love it as much. If you're looking for a good representation for romance especially when it comes to this author I think this is the one to go with. The next book I want to talk about is a book that I also truly, truly, truly love. Like definitely one of my favorites throughout the entire year of everything that I read and that would be Bringing Down the Duke. This book follows our main character Annabelle and she is one of the first students to be able to go to university and the agreement for her being able to go is that she is supposed to recruit men to kind of see their part in the suffragette movement and she meets a man named Montgomery. She's kind of given him as like her target basically and Montgomery is a duke so he is really hard to sway he's really hard to try to convince and then they get a little bit entangled and so, sort of start a bit of a romance that's basically what the story follows like i said this has romance in it but it is more i would say air on the side of historical fiction which I really enjoyed. This was one of the books that scratched an itch that I had this year where I wanted romance but I wanted historical fiction at the same time. I will say the ending of this book is a little bit strange. It feels kind of rushed and I wish there would be another one or more about the story maybe from Montgomery's point of view but overall I did really like it. I love both of the characters. I think that Montgomery is supposed to be like this asshole that you sort of grow to love because more and more of him is revealed and it's not necessarily in the sense of he is such a good person but like his mind sort of changes throughout it and I really like Annabelle because she is like that stubborn hard-headed does what she wants to do kind of character and I actually really appreciate those characters so I definitely love this one if you're looking for a romantic kind of historical fiction this one would be right up your alley. The next book I have here is a book that I got I think in my bay crate and that would be Faker and this follows our main character Emmy and then our other main character Tate. Basically this is a hate to love office romance which you'll see another one of those in here you can probably guess which one it is. Basically, Emmy works for a company called Nuts and Bolts, and she 
basically walks around thinking that she's a faker because she thinks that she is putting on this air of I don't care like I know there's a bunch of burly men that I work with she gets like sexually harassed constantly in this novel but she also gets looked down on by her co-worker Tate and that's what this follows is her and Tate's relationship when they are kind of thrown together to work on this project building this house for a good cause and Tate and Emmy have to work pretty closely to get this done and Emmy basically has a wall up the entire time because Tate has been a giant asshole to her. Well Tate at one point in time kind of reveals that he is interested in her and they try to and she basically tries to bring that wall down and it's about forgiveness and learning what is worth forgiving and what is worth holding on to and how words can have a lasting impression and how you treat somebody can have a lasting impression. I really like this novel because for me the romance was good and I do like Tate as a romantic interest and I obviously love the like enemies to lovers kind of trope and I like office romances and things like that. That's definitely one of the ones that I really enjoy. I love office romances but this for me I think the reason why I liked it so much is I love Emmy. Emmy is from a very diverse family and I really appreciated that but also she does find herself and she sort of realizes that the faking that she thinks she's doing is not actually faking and that is truly who she is. There's another point in this book where she learns to stand up for herself and just become the person that she thinks she hasn't been this the entire of uh, the entirety of the book and I really enjoy that. I think that for me definitely Emmy and Tate were the two standout characters but especially Emmy I think that she was super enjoyable and a lot of fun to read. If you're looking for a book once again that is like an office romance and then like hate to love this is the one for you. Now the next book I have here was another standout for me. I thought this was so fun and I have a lot of friends who haven't read romance books who ended up really liking this one and that would be the Bromance Book Club. Basically this is told from a male character's perspective but there is partially some points where it is told from his wife's perspective as well. But basically Gavin is a baseball player as you can tell from the cover of the book and he has a little bit of a spat with his wife because one night she has an orgasm in bed and he realizes that she has been faking orgasms the entirety of their marriage. Now a little bit of backstory on our two main characters. They met and had a very tumultuous like crazy love affair basically and then she did get pregnant and she became a baseball wife and it does focus a lot on being a baseball wife in this book which I thought was really cool because that is an aspect I think of like American culture that we are pretty aware of here like the wives of a lot of the sports players so it was really cool to see the story from her perspective but basically Gavin gets bombarded by his other teammates into joining this book club called the bromance book club and the first rule of book club is you don't talk about it and what they do is they read romance novels and try to apply the more savory parts of those books to their actual lives because they believe that their women are obviously reading those books and then they are taking some expectations from those and it's nice to be able to apply them. Now they're doing it I think in a in a nice way like they're not trying to be crass about it they know that obviously like a romance novel is not necessarily how real life is but you do obviously learn some things from them. This opened up I think for me a lot of good discussion as well. Um, as romance readers I think it's kind of off-putting and my boyfriend and I kind of had this discussion where if you're dating a romance reader you feel like their expectations for what a relationship should be are really high and I feel like that's unrealistic and he definitely agreed and I think that sort of opened up that discussion because there is one point in time in this book when it sort of revealed what is happening to his wife and she gets really upset about it and he's like well if it's working and I'm not taking like the unsavory parts about it like I mean they do try to apply quite a bit um he's like then what's what's the problem and I really liked that so I think that this book for me was a standout for more than one reason I think the baseball wives aspect of it and his wife just kind of finding herself and getting back to the true heart of she, who she is and then the actual book club itself with all of the guys I love the characters in this book there are going to be more I have actually already pre-ordered the second one and then also hearing Gavin's perspective like the fact that the main character character, um, the one that we're originally presented with is a male character. I really enjoyed that too because I haven't read any romances from like a man's perspective um, in a really long time. So this was a really good like breath of fresh air for me and it was just fun. I thought it was really really fun and I think that the whole like trying to win your wife back aspect of this was really cool as well. So if you're looking for something really hilarious the the guys in this book are incredibly funny like the supporting characters are incredibly funny. If you want something like that this is the book for you.
Now the next book I have here is a book that I read pretty early on in the year. It is another Christina Lauren book and that would be Roomies. This follows our main character Holland and one day she is attacked on the subway and thrown basically into the subway tracks and she is saved by a man named Calvin. But Calvin after calling 911 basically disappears and this is a man that she has been pining over. Basically she takes the subway to get off where he is so that she can watch him play because he does play an instrument outside of the subway to earn money and he's amazing at it. And come to find out his student visa has actually expired because he did go to Juilliard. And what ends up happening is Holland agrees to marry him because she is working with one of her uncles who does own a theater production. And one of the people that is supposed to play for them is basically just a giant pain in the ass and he ends up leaving. So they're trying to get Calvin to stay in the country to be able to play. So he does actually end up moving in with Holland and they sort of start this, I don't want to say romance right off the bat. I feel like the second half of the book is more of romance and the first half is more just about them getting to know each other as people. I've never read a book like that where it's like fake marriage. I've read a lot of fake dating. That's another one of my favorite tropes. But fake marriage is one that I've never really read and I loved it. I thought it was a lot of fun. This was one of the first like romance books that I had read at the beginning of the year and what really got me started in like my love affair with them. I think that it was fun and I like Holland as a character because she is a bit eccentric. She's definitely type A and so to see her go through the situation that she's going through with Calvin it was a lot of fun to watch. This is fun but also I feel like tough to read at the same time because Holland is going through some stuff. Calvin is obviously going through some stuff and it was just it was heartfelt. Um, and then at the same time, I also really like this because her uncles are actually a gay couple. So there is a bit of representation in this as well. So if you're looking for representation and you're looking for like theater and behind the scenes stuff for theater or like fake marriage dating kind of stuff, you'd really like this one as well. Let's talk about everyone's favorite book. Everyone's favorite romance book. Everyone I know who's like, oh, I'm thinking about getting into romance. If they recommend a book, this is the one they recommend. And for a very good reason. That would be The Hating Game. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Josh Templeman, the love interest in this book, is hands down my favorite love interest in any book ever. I think that he is breathtaking. Basically, Lucy and Josh work together for a big corporation that has basically blended two publishing houses together. And Lucy and Josh are competing to have the same job. And the reason why that's so important is Lucy and Josh work for the owners of the two company of the company that merged together. They work separately for the two owners. And the reason why that is so bad is because Josh and Lucy hate each other. They do share, um, they don't share the same office, but they are in like the same kind of vicinity to each other. And there's a lot of playful, like Lucy trying to figure out what jo what makes Josh tick. Josh is just an asshole. Like the comments that he makes about her, the like observations that he makes about her, definitely like as a woman reading that, you can definitely feel it in your core. I think a lot of us have experienced that kind of stuff. But the reason why I love this so much is because of the gradual build for both of the characters. I feel like a lot of the time when I read romance, the main character sort of always has their life figured out and then something happens and sort of throws them off. For this, Lucy's basically a mess the entire time. She doesn't know if she wants to continue doing what she wants to do. She doesn't know if she wants to go home and work on her parents' small farm. So when she's presented with the idea of trying to one-up Josh and get the job, it brings out a side of Lucy that later on in the book is just stunning. Like, it's absolutely breathtaking the way that Lucy changes. And the same thing with Josh. Josh basically gets his walls broken down slowly over the course of the book, and you get to see more and more of what makes him how he is, and I appreciate that. And I think that for me I'm okay with unlikable characters or characters that come off as rude or mean at the beginning of books if they are growing and changing throughout the entirety of it and I really feel that way about Josh in this book. This was fun. The romance is super hot. The sex is super hot. The just like the overall story of this book, like the tension of it just really gets you and I, I love it and I recommend it to basically anyone who has ears that will listen to me talk about it. Now the last book I have here is actually my favorite book of the year and it is like of all genres just my number one book that I read this year and it happens to be a romance book and it happens to be one that I read in February and that would be Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. This book is polarizing. People either really like it or really hate it. The reason why I love it, well overall I think the story is really fun. Josh and Hazel are kind of interconnected because Hazel's old roommate and best friend Josh is her younger brother. And they do meet again after college when they're much older in life and Hazel and Josh have obviously been through some relationships and they're both currently single. And they decide to kind of have a dating pact where they are going to go out on double dates with each other to try to find each other a potential girlfriend or boyfriend, one that they approve of, one that they think is kind of fun. 
So a lot of the book is them going on these horrendous double dates and it is really hilarious but obviously they do kind of have a little bit of romance later on for them. I'm not really going to spoil much of that, but as you can tell, most romances tend to end with happy endings having to do with the two main characters. But what I really liked about this book, what really I think for me solidified it as my favorite is actually Hazel. Hazel is a very manic character. Like she's definitely very, I would say bipolar. Um, she's very like up and down throughout the course of the book. She either is, she gets really depressed at sometimes, and then sometimes she just decides to finger paint and paint her her apartment and do these crazy crafts and like change her hair and her clothes and just does whatever she wants to do and I saw myself in Hazel a lot and I think that's why I loved it so much. I identify with her on so many levels and a lot of my friends who read this who were like, well I didn't like it because I didn't like Hazel. I'm like, wow, well I hope you never meet me in real life like a lot of my internet friends because I'm like, I'm basically Hazel like 1000%. And I loved that aspect. I think that she is a phenomenal character. I think that she is very true to like what, for me, I think it's like living with bipolar and being really up and down. Now the authors don't necessarily say that that's what she has, but you can, as somebody who does have it, sort of see the correlation between a lot of the things that she struggles with. And a lot of this book is more so about her feeling like she's too loud and too wild and too all over the place that she's basically unlovable for those reasons. And as somebody who's been in a relationship where I've been made to feel that way, and I'm now on the other side where like I've met somebody who loves me regardless of that. I think this book resonates even more with me and it just makes me feel even closer to Hazel as a character. And so this is really realistic, I think, to how it is for my like ladies who are deemed too loud, too wild, too much to handle. I think Hazel's a good representation of that and Josh is just a fun but also serious and more, I would think, like, I don't know. He 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 thinks of the logistics of things and Hazel's more of like live in the moment kind of stuff. So I really like this book when I read it. I fucking loved it. My favorite book of the year and definitely a book that I think I'll reread every single year. I'm actually considering rereading it right now because that's just how much I love it. But like I said, this is polarizing. So if you don't like those kinds of characters, you probably won't like this because you probably won't like Hazel very much. Alright guys, so those are all of my favorite romances from 2019 and my favorite book of the year. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, let me know down below your favorite kind of character in a book, like what really draws you to a character, whether it be romantic or platonic, let me know. But I love you guys so, so much. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video.